Hi everyone, welcome to this Revit 2019 tutorial on how to detail a timber eye joist floor. I've got a standard residential um, three bed semi detached house. Um, you can see here it's pretty run of the mill. I've also, if we look at the elevation, set up some levels to control the heights of the buildings. And you can see here, if we just change the scale of this, I've got a level three, which is 222 millimeters above. Um, level 1. So this is the area where I'm going to detail the joists. You notice that the depth of the joist is going to be the difference between the two, so it's 222. So before I begin, I'm going to go into level 3 and I'm going to import the joists that I need into the system. So I'm going to go to insert, load a family, and I'm going to look to the structural framing folder. In here we have a wood folder and then we have a plywood web joist. So if I load that in, that will load a new structural framing um, section, and we there we have plywood joist. Now as a default, it loads in a 302 and a 356. I'm going to duplicate this type, and I'm going to rename it and call it 222. Again, you can set this for whatever your particular supplier is. So I'm going to change the type properties, and I simply set that to 222. As part of that, I'm going to bring in some solid timber as well. So I'm going to bring in some uh, wood, so just timber. And I'm also going to load in, it doesn't matter what size, so I'm going to duplicate and change its type. And that will have a timber. And I'm just going to rename this. So I'm going to say it's 222 or 44 by 222. And then again, right click and change its type properties. So again, the breadth is 44 and the depth is 2. So that gives me the, the main framing members I'm going to detail this floor with. So I've got a layout. You see I do have a staircase, so I'm going to need to put in an opening. So I'm going to start with going to structure beam. Now note that I am in level 3, so that will put the joist at the correct level. This is the timber type, and I'm just going to position this beam. So we go to beam, and I'm going to take it from, let's say, the the centre of the wall here and detail it straight across to let's go horizontal here. So that is my first trim and beam. I'm just going to manually move it into position because I want that in line with the staircase and as we're doing this I tend to put in a section through the staircase. I'm going to put a section in through here and if we quickly look at the section you will see that there is the joist I've just placed. It's not quite in the right position, so I'm just going to move it slightly so it's on the there, and I'm just going to quickly create a copy so that will put one and two, so a double trimmer effectively. And then I'm going to select them and create a copy again, and I'm going to take this across 2700 to form the, the structural opening. I may want to just quickly undo that select the two of these and just move them because I've not included the thickness as I copied. So when we look at this, I've also created a 3D view of a joist layer, um, which has just hidden off the first floor components. You can see all I've done is selected different categories. So I'm just gonna hide the gallows brackets in the porch. So hide, hide in view by element. So that gives the trimmer positions and now we just need to trim off the floor. So again, I go back to my level three I'm going to go to structure beam and again it's the same type and I'm just going to draw a beam from there to here and you see Revit will automatically tidy up the framing and I'm just going to take that across roughly to about there and again I'm going to double trim that as well so I'll just put that copy that across so it's now a double and here we have it so what you may want to do is extend these in so they meet the the outer inner leaf so the party wall so I can just make sure they are the correct length again probably should have taken a little bit more care when placing the members now that's like this and then we stretch that into position and we go back to our joist layout so now we have the sort of main criteria if you sort of want to see what you're working with um, I'm working with a component wall so I can select them and then split it into parts um, and that will just show the individual leaves. So now we see the joist bearing directly on to the inner leaf of the wall. So back to my level three. 
and it's now starting to put in the iJoist. So what you can do is you can copy this up and just change its type. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put these in roughly at 400 centers. Select that joist and then simply change the type to the plywood. If we look at it again, you can see now we have a iJoist web beam. So again, back to level three. It's just a matter of finishing off. So we can select. You can do a model array. I tend to just be sort of old school, and I tend just to copy with a multiple each time. So I can just drag up and just enter in the value. Once we get to this situation, you will see here that we have an issue where that's actually coming in over the, the wall. So I'm just going to drag it and stretch it back to there. And then it's the same with this joist here. And I'm going to repeat the copy process. So once I've shortened the beam, again, pick a point, and then it's 400 each time. And you can get quite quick, just to detail the joists in. So that will go to there. Uh, we then look at inside. So I'm going to copy this beam and I'm going to take it down 800 and then just stretch it back to the face of the inside of the double trimmer and then copy. And the process is the same. So it's copy 400. There, I'm going to select the outside trimmer again. You can space these as you require. It's just more indicative than anything else for now. Uh, we change that to the, met, the plywood web joist, and then we again start copying. So we have a look at the 3D, and we there quickly have put in some joists. If you wish to have another one just to catch some plasterboard. Um, It'd be nice to put it in so back on level three and i'm just going to create a copy of that and possibly position it just there on the inside face and we may do something similar here so we copy this and again just go into there so there we have a look at it we've now got a joist layer so some, one thing I always do is I always look at the, the individual family that I've got because again this is out of the box Autodesk content so I'm going to edit it and a little trick that I do is I select the middle web and you can see that they're using a shared parameter so I click it, set it to none and then I can manually set the material so I'm going to go with a OSB material so I can set it and then go apply and OK and that will set the material for this and then again for the top and bottom of the 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 flange we can click again that it is not a shared parameter and then go into it and we can go if I search for say C16 it will find a timber C16 grade again set apply and I set the material definitions and then if we quickly load that into the project overwrite the existing values you'll see you now start to get the definition and particularly if we go for a realistic style you can now see that we're now starting to detail the joist so if you want to take it a step further you could um, now go in and we can put in another floor so to do that I'm just going to go on my elevation and I'm going to put in another level um, and this is going to denote the top of the decking so I can go to level and I'm just going to pop a level in at that point and again just for clarity just to set it up the way the other one is and I'm going to say there's going to be a 25 mil chipboard and I'm going to go this is going to be So we can just go and put this on to find, go to wireframe, and we can link in the floor below if we wish using the, the view underlay. So we can just go level three if we wish. But again, I'm just going to put in a very simple uh, floor to start with. So I'm going to go to floor 
architecture um, and you can see what I've already set up is a 22 mil chipboard floor type and if we look at the editor and then the structure it's just basically a chipboard with a 22 mil thickness let's change it to 25 and let's rename this as 25 mil chipboard and then we can just draw the floor into position so I'm going to go from this position and take it across so I'm just going to put it round actually we'll put it round the inside of the the floor and um, so it won't interact with the block work and we can take our floor in on each of these again I'm just going to the inside of the, the brickwork or block work in this case and then we can confirm that if we have a look at the joist layout you will see there we have a deck over the top. Now you may want to take this a lot further, so I tend to do this and edit its boundary, and I tend to do this just in a hidden line view because it's nice and easy to see. So if you wanted to actually detail the proper size sheets, you could go in and offset, uh, let's say take a 2400 offset there, and then we do a 1200 offset off this one which gets me to there and then if we just close and tidy these up you can see what I'm doing is I'm just going to detail that floor as an actual sheet size and then I can actually delete the rest of them so I've got an actual sheet and if we put that into position there's the sheet let's have a look at the shaded mode again realistic and there we have an actual 2400 by 1200 sheet but again it's not quite positioned as I would need it so again I'm going to go back on top go back to a hidden line and this is the sheet so in reality this sheet will be positioned centered on the joist so I'm going to position that there and I'm going to then create a copy of it across there and you can see that gets me my first sheeting layer I'm going to edit this boundary I'm going to take this back to the inside there and here it should actually just be done to the inside of the the block so you can see that is my off standard size sheet um, I'm going to copy this across 1200 and then we can work from there so that positions that one in this and again to create the stagger I just move it up from its midpoint to there, it's just a matter of going through editing each boundary to get what you want. And if we take that to there, and then again edit this boundary, and you can see you start to build up the system. If we look here, where we have a, a boundary where it intersects the floor, it's just a matter of coming down from the double trimmer to there tidy up the corners here and here, here and here and then confirm it and then it's just a matter of repeating that process through the system you can see now we get the definition of all the joists in position and then we have our decking detailed as required so that's pretty much it just set the levels bring in the beams and then detail as required so join me again soon for another quick video on how to detail some structural vim.